do to stop the spread? Well, you know that we have one of the lowest mortality rates anywhere. If you know uh, Biden and Obama stopped their testing, they just stopped it. You probably know that. I'm sure you don't want to report it. But uh, they stopped testing. Uh, right in the middle, they just went no more testing and uh, on a much lesser problem than the problem that we have, obviously, with respect to uh, this is the worst thing that's happened since probably 1917. This is a very bad thing. All over the world, it's 188 countries right now. But no, we are — we test more than anybody by far. And when you test, you create cases. So we've created cases. Uh, I can tell you some countries, they test when somebody walks into a hospital sick or walks into maybe a doctor's office, but usually a hospital. That's the testing they do, so they don't have cases. Whereas we do, we have all of these cases. So, you know, it's a double-edged sword. At the same time, we have the lowest mortality or just about the lowest mortality in the world. Uh, we're doing a great job. We're doing very well with vaccines, and we're doing very, very well with therapeutics. And I think we're going to have some very good information coming out soon. But we have the best and certainly uh, uh, the biggest, by far the biggest, testing program anywhere in the world. If you tested China or Russia or any of the larger countries, if you just tested uh, India as an example, the way we test, you'd see numbers that would be uh, very surprising. Brazil, too. You know, Brazil's going through a big problem. But they don't do testing like we do. So we uh, do the testing, and uh, by doing the testing, we have tremendous numbers of cases. If we didn't do the — as an example, we've done 45 million tests. If we did half that number, you'd have half the cases, probably, around that number. If we did — if we did another half of that, you'd have half the numbers. Everyone would be saying, oh, we're doing so well on cases. But when I see it reported in the night, you can check me out on this. I mean, they always talk about — they're always talking about uh, cases, the number of cases. Well. It is a big factor that we do. We have a lot of cases because we have a lot of testing, far more than any other country in the world. And it's also the best testing. Yeah, please. Yeah, the federal government is set to resume federal executions for the first time in more than a decade, potentially as soon as, as a couple of hours from now. Are you monitoring the last-minute appeals on that case? Well, I think what I'm going to do is allow that to uh, be answered by our Attorney General. Do you mind, Bill? Yes, sir. We, we obviously monitor uh, the appellate process. And, Mr. President, have you given any consideration to using your clemency powers to stop these executions and commute them to life sentences? Well, I've, I've looked at it very strongly. And in this particular case, I'm dealing with uh, Bill and all of the people at Justice. And it's always tough. You're talking about the death penalty, but when you talk about people that did what this particular person did, that's tough also. Uh, so we're going to see what happens. Right now, they have a stay, I believe, right? They have a stay. And we'll let the courts determine the final outcome. And that's what's going to happen, OK? Um, you're asking Americans to have full faith in law enforcement. How do you respond to critics who say you undermined your own federal law enforcement agency, the DOJ, when you commuted the sentence of Roger Stone? Well, if you look uh, back on it, uh, this was an investigation that should have never taken place. Uh, you have guys like Comey, you have uh, McCabe, you have Strook, you have uh, his lover Lisa Page, you have all of these people running around, you have Brennan and Clapper who lied to Congress, you have uh, many, many people, you have people that change documents going into the FISA courts, and uh, it's a terrible thing. And this is an investigation that they said should have ended before it started, it shouldn't have started, and if it did, it should have ended immediately, because they found, as you know as well as I do, they found nothing initially, but it went on for two years or longer. And uh, now I did — I'm getting rave reviews for what I did for Roger Stone. And he, frankly, is going to go and now appeal his case. He had a jury for a woman who hated Roger Stone and uh, who hated probably me. But she went on a false pretense, and he wasn't given a fair trial. He wasn't — it's not a fair trial. He wasn't given another trial. He should have been given another trial. Uh, I won't say more. I won't talk about the judge. I'm not going to — why would I ever talk about a judge? But uh, this was a judge that gave, I believe, solitary confinement to Paul Manafort. Al Capone didn't have solitary confinement. So these are things that happened. And uh, if you look at President Bush, President Clinton, President Obama, 
Take a look at what they did. Uh, frankly, it's a very unfair. Roger Stone was treated very unfairly, in my opinion, and so were many others on this side. In the meantime, you have the other ones who are admitted lying before. They admitted they lied before Congress. They leaked. They leaked classified information, which is something you just can't do. And what are they doing? So we'll see what happens. But no, we're, we're getting rave reviews for what I did. Okay. Are you going to be able to hold the convention in Jacksonville with, with all this virus spread? Well, we're going to see.